Hello everybody, I hope you're fitting well. Stephen Clark here with another light-hearted look at the Thai news. Bangkok-bound passengers refused entry into Thailand by immigration. Phuket Roti knife attack. Police arrest Nigerians in Phuket over scams. Why oh, is that surprising? I'll be back. Street vendors vow to return to Bangkok streets. The Thai bar's very strong and that's a problem for Thailand. But first up, the bombings in Thailand's capital, Bangkok. A total of six shrapnel bombs exploded at three locations in the Thai capital of Bangkok on Friday. While Thailand was hosting a high-level meeting attended by the US and other Asia-Pacific countries. The bombs injured at least four innocent people. Thailand's Prime Minister Prayut chan has condemned those behind the bombings and he has ordered those responsible to protect to take care of the injured people. Bombs have gone off around different parts of Bangkok. Bombs have gone off at BTS stations and government buildings and four people have been injured. Four innocent people have been injured. There has also been a fire in a shop in the Soy 19 Pachambury Road in Pratinam area near the busy markets. The fire started around 5 a.m. this morning. Police don't know if it's related to the bombings or not. Police suspect all four incidents part of a wider campaign that started late last night when a few bombs were left outside the Royal Thai Police Headquarters in Bangkok. There has been arrests made but nobody has been charged as yet. It is not quite clear yet who is responsible for these horrific bombings and no arrests have been made but I'm sure the Thai police will find out who is responsible. One thing I will say about the Thai police, they do protect the Thai people. Phuket's Roti Knife attack victim identified as an ambassador's son. The Egyptian tourist slashed by a Roti seller over the weekend has been identified as the son of the Egyptian ambassador in Uruguay. The incident occurred on July the 19th when a man from Koh Lanta, 32-year-old Sarachi Rakasap, attacked an Egyptian man with a knife in front of a family mart in Soi Tayad, the Muay Thai street in Shillong, Phuket. He said he was angry at the tourist for using the F word. Yes, using the F word too many times while buying roti from him and his wife. He told police he thought the man was swearing at his wife. The Egyptian man ended up getting slashed by a machete on his neck but luckily survived the assault following surgery in hospital. The identity of the victim has been revealed as a 30-year-old Muhammad Abbas from Egypt and he is the son of the Egyptian ambassador in Uruguay. He is currently recovering from a severe wound on his neck at a hospital in Phuket. The wound was about seven centimeters long. Sirachi, the attacker, remained at the scene waiting for the police after the attack. Along with the weapon he used, he is actually a construction contractor from Koh Lana and was just helping his wife sell roti and to fend off people swearing at his wife and belt him with a machete. Talk about take no prisoners. Off with his head. He has been charged with attempted murder. Maybe attempted decapitation would be better than that. Well, on a serious note, I keep telling people about this problem in Thailand. Don't say the word F to any Thai person because they think you're telling them to go and get F. It's just a twisted way they receive the signal. They think you're telling them to get F, even if you're talking about something and using the F word. Use it at your own discretion, but believe me, you're better off not saying the F word in Thailand, otherwise you might get yourself into a spot of bother, or even get attacked by a machete and end up in hospital with half your head hanging off. Don't forget, when you say the F word, the Thais think you're telling them to go and get F, and they will get very upset. Prime police arrest Nigerian over Phuket-based Nigerian romance scam. A 38-year-old Nigerian alleged romance scammer has been arrested in Bangkok for allegedly operating bank accounts, 
and arranging money transactions. The Nigerian's base of operations was Phuket. The suspect is now being returned to Phuket, where an arrest warrant was issued on July the 9th, charging this man with conspiracy to commit fraud. Immigration Police Bureau Chief Police Lieutenant General Sompong Shindung reports that police made the arrest on July the 19th at a condominium in the Bangna district in Bangkok. During the raid, they also received 14 items of evidence, including several bank books, an ATM card, and money transaction slips, as well as the suspect's mobile phone. The romance scam, by now well known, was perpetrated by a gang claiming to be white businessmen. So many people around the world have fallen victim to these animals. They get to know their victim over a few months and then start the money scam. Some girls losing their life savings to these animals. And if they can't get their life savings, they start threatening them with violence or whatever it will take to get money out of them. Quite often the girls will pay the money to be left alone and they'll do it to them again and again, getting thousands and thousands of dollars out of them. I hope the Thai police lock them up and throw the key away. How many innocent Thai girls do you think these guys have got pretending to be white males from the Western countries? sending bogus photographs of themselves next to sports cars when in reality they're in Nigeria in a broken down little hut with an internet connection or in a rented condo in Thailand somewhere so they tell the girls what they want to hear and proceed to con them out of their money. How many innocent Thai girls do you think they've got? And how many innocent girls all over the world do you think these animals have taken advantage of? These Nigerians need to be stopped in their tracks. I mean, give them very, very heavy sentences. Put them in jail for a long time. You know, usually they're elder women they pick on who've lost their marriage marriages, lost their husband, lost their family, lost their car, lost their house. And to top that off, some Nigerian's going to steal all their money. These girls get lonely, go on the internet for some company. They get promised this, they get promised that. When all along, it's just a Nigerian scamming them out of all their money. These Nigerian scammers need to go away. They need to go away for a long time in jail. I hope the Thai police throw them in jail and throw away the key. In the first six months of 2018, over 7,000 foreigners have been arrested or banned from entering Thailand at the country's five major airports. Immigration police said that 3,600 had criminal records, while more than 3,400 posed a risk to public order, the latter group being made up mostly of South Asian immigrants who were suspected of trying to enter that country to work illegally. As for travellers with history, 156 were arrested for transnational crimes and 30 others were refused entry due to sexual assault and related charges. Immigration officials stated, foreigners with sex related offences would not be let into Thailand and that would lend further to Thailand's already class as a sex country which I'm afraid I totally agree with. They should not be let into Thailand. Sexual offenders should not be let into Thailand at all. They actually shouldn't be let out of their own country. The several thousand foreigners turned away or arrested were only a drop in the bucket of 14 million visitors to Thailand on a yearly basis. But there was an incident just recently brought to everybody's attention. 13 passengers refused entry into Thailand by Immigration Police. Region 2 Immigration Police at Sawinapum Airport report that they have denied entry to 13 foreigners who were unable to provide proof of funds for their visit to Thailand. Immigration officials claim that the tourists were not entering Thailand for tourism reasons. Apart from not being able to provide evidence of sufficient funds, the arriving passengers didn't have travel insurance either. There were three from India, Myanmar, Ethiopia, another two from South Korea and Vietnam. Immigration police stated they were using provisions in Article 12, Section 2 and 9 to refuse entry of the passengers. The 13 passengers were held at the airport awaiting flights back to their original home country. Now, don't forget when you're entering Thailand, a minimum requirement of 20,000 Thai baht to enter the kingdom on a tourist visa. That is the law. And lots of people don't do that, including me, but you must have access to 20,000 Thai baht when you pass through customs if you are asked for it. That means you must go to an ATM in the 
customs and pull out 20,000 baht. A receipt, a bank book, and photos that will not work. You have to have cash. Be prepared. And also on a quick note, it's a good idea to have health insurance as well. Trust me on that one. But more on that later. Thailand's street vendors vow to return with help from the new Thai government. The network of Thai street vendors for sustainability development has vowed to lobby the new government to allow them back onto the streets to ply their trade. A network representative said previous orders by the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration BMA to curb street vendors left hundreds of them badly affected and the network will partition the government to change its policy. Previous vendors tried to talk to the Junta government and ask for help with not much success. They were sent to the BMA but they have mostly been unhelpful. Now we will lobby the new government and political parties. The BMA over the past few years has cracked down on operators under its street vendor regulation policy. The city administration had tried to regulate vendors largely unsuccessfully, but this was thanks to the military backup. Oh, this is good. As a result, the number of locations where street vendors were permitted to trade has been reduced to only 100, and that's from 644. And this is a re direct result of why Kalsan Road is failed and why Sukhumvit Road has failed. The network of street vendors is hopeful the new government will see it their way and help them out. The network is comprised of three vendor tradings on previously permitted spots on major roads such as Sukhumvit and Silong. And now these areas are virtually dead, along with Kalsan Road. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration tore the heart and soul out of Bangkok and killed one of the reasons you go to Bangkok. The Thai baht is getting very strong against the US dollar. This could have devastating effects on Thailand. We're going to have a look at the Thai currency and its impact on Thailand. Since the beginning of the year, Thailand's currency has jumped more than 5% against the American dollar. Year over year basis, it has bounced even higher, nearly 8%. The strong currency is worsening the Thai economy by hurting its exports even further. The, the country's central bank could give in to pressure and cut rates to curb the rising baht, economists have said. The strength of the Thai baht has been supported by Thailand's large trade surplus and Hawke's central bank, among other factors. The strong currency is worsening the Thai economy's fight by hurting exports further. Meanwhile, exports are already declining. They dropped for the third straight month in May, falling 5.79% from a year earlier. Thai baht continues to soar against the US dollar all of this year, significantly more than any other emerging currency on the market. But the flexing of the Thai baht muscle is sparking concern as Thailand's domestic economy softens. Since the start of 2019, the Thai baht has jumped more than 5% against the US dollar on a year-to-year -year basis. It's roared ahead nearly 8%. Other emerging economies are also soaring against the US dollar, but still lag behind the baht. The Indonesian rupee and the Filipino peso have risen more than 3% this year against the US dollar. At the present time, at the moment, the US dollar is buying 30.93 Thai baht. Wow. This is having dramatic effects on Thailand's exports and its tourist industry, all industries. So what did you guys think of this video? There's some very interesting subjects in there. It'd be great to get a discussion going in the comments below. And don't forget every Saturday and Sunday night, 5 p.m. Thai time, Talk Back Thailand. Anyhow, that's it from me. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you very soon.